I'm Jackie Maxted and today I'm talking to Zoe Foster, author, columnist and editor-at-large of print.com.au. Hi Zoe, was that good? <laughs> that was great. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. I'm You've got the that. job. Well done. <laughs> Excellent. <laughs> Um, Zoe, you've uh, had a sort of uh, prolific career already at a very young age. Can you tell me about where this passion for writing started? Oh, I, it was one of those things at uni where I didn't know what to do when I, didn't know what I was going to be when I grew up. But I knew that I enjoyed writing and that I seemed to be okay at it. Um, but I thought I was too cool to write for like uni magazines and stuff like that. But I wish that I had, I guess, in retrospect. So yeah, I kind of just applied for any journalist job that came around and I've never felt like I've had a job because it's always been so fun and I think that's when you know you're in the right <coughs> career when it doesn't really feel like work. How did you make your first sort of break to get into that, uh, into that career? Um, well, I worked at a kids and a teen mag um, but I think um, when Mia Friedman asked me to come over to Cosmo was the big moment for me, being in ACP and 54 Park Street and all that came with that, that was the big moment I think for me. What was it like walking into 54 Park Street the first oh, day? I was terrified. <laughs> I was absolutely petrified and you know in later years I'd see the interns and the work experience girls come in with just so much confidence and just talk to anyone on the staff but I was so scared when I was even meeting with Mia for the interview but they were all so lovely and welcoming and they're gorgeous. Was the environment the way you thought it would be? No I thought it would be a bit scarier because you'd heard stories being at smaller publishing houses everyone was a bit simultaneously jealous and scared of and threatened by and secretly wanting to work for ACP <laughs> so yeah I didn't know what to expect but they were beautiful especially Bron McCann she was so welcoming and lovely. Did you have mentors there? Um, Bron kind of became one still mm -hmm. is and Mia mm -hmm. as well and then Alison Finesse when I moved over to Harper's as well. You started Fruity Beauty at a time when other people definitely weren't blogging very much. Yeah. What was the impetus behind that? I, was, I remember having all these meetings going, we need to be online, we need to be online, we need to have a blog, and it was too hard with 9MSN and ACP. So I just buggered off and did it myself. And, you know, made sure I was politically sound in terms of, you know, always just, you know, not really saying that I worked at Cosmo, but people kind of knew who I was. But again, just getting rid of some of that information that I had that I wanted to, you know, all the dinner party stuff that girls wanted to know about. What was the best fake tan? Or how do you do that one little trick that a makeup artist tells you? You don't have enough room in three points in a magazine to tell them. So my style, which is very waffly and conversational, was perfect for blogging. And I loved that. What did you think when you started getting responses back from the audience? Um, it was great. It was great to have that feedback. There were a few gnarly times and you realise that you really you become quite vulnerable as a blogger because it's immediate and if people don't like things they'll tell you and mm -hmm. you just, it hardens you up I guess mm -hmm. which is good but yeah you, it, there was part of me that going hang on I'm doing I'm not getting paid for this I'm doing it out of the love of it don't read it if you don't want to. <laughs> I think you said that once yeah I did and then, it, and then I sort of I got too busy at Harper's so Freddie kind of took a back seat but yeah. Um, how did you make the decision to move from Harper's to online? Um, Another mentor, Margaret Kramer, she um, asked me to consider it and very much allowed me to be part of the process of development. I mean, it was her idea, but it was just wonderful being able to sit with her and she's an amazing woman and, and really flesh out this idea that hadn't, you know, in our eyes, making beauty bigger than a blog but with that same tone and making it really entertaining just hadn't been done in the way that Vogue does fashion, I guess. So, yeah, that was really fun and just liberating. And a lot of people are like, you're an idiot, you're leaving your best job in beauty to work on some website. And I was like, I'm a pioneer. <laughs> <laughs> I will do great things here. And, you know, the, the ego of seeing my tone be spread throughout a whole site was mind-boggling. So it was just so much fun. You've moved on now to become editor at large. Yeah. Tell me what that means. Uh, yeah, I didn't know either. I Googled it. <laughs> <laughs> um, editor at large, editor at small. Um, it's basically, so I'm a, very much still part of the brand and, and still a face of and for print, but more like a contributor now. So I'm still blogging, you know, four days a week and going to the office once a week and that sort of thing. But the balance of stuff that was happening with my books and my other columns was just, it was becoming imbalanced and I was just getting very stressed. Mm. So I was like, I don't need the desk. And it was this great moment after working in a desk for 
what was it, 10 years of going, maybe I don't need it. And being a bit scared about it, but going, no, this is the right thing. And I haven't missed it. I just sit at a different desk, it's at home. <laughs> so I'm still there all day at my laptop. But Are you working yeah. harder? I am working yeah. harder. Isn't that weird? Mm. I was surprised mm. by that. I was like, I'm going to have this time, go to the gym, go have coffee with my girlfriends. Hell no. I haven't done any of that. I'm just Ugg boots and tracksuit pants all day. Very glamorous. Tell me about your books. Well, I'd love to. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you'd never ask. <laughs> I, so I've written the three. Air Kisses, which was the beauty book based on the beauty industry, and then a dating relationship book called Textbook Romance with Hamish Blake, and then Playing Field, which came out a few months ago, another fiction, another novel. Were they all a very different journey? Yeah, they really were. I can never believe that I finished one, mm. you know, and then to actually see it in form is like, wow, I can't believe I did that. That will be the beauty of working from home, is that now I'm about to start another book and just... You know, I had to cram it in on Saturdays because I had a full-time job and then functions and launches at night. I don't know how I did it. Mm. But, um, yeah, so now I can write my books through the week as well, which will be good. Which is your favourite book of the three you've written? I think textbook romance. <clears throat> and I've had amazing reception from girls on that. Mm. That's so beautiful. I know it's cheesy, but getting these emails, maybe five a week from girls going, you really... I know it's so dog-eared and bookmarked and I've written all over it and I love it and it's my Bible and you've really helped me and I was in such a rut and I'm so happy and mm -hmm. that's really nice stuff. Have you changed the way that you um, go through the process of writing a book, having done it now a number of times? <laughs> Terrible. I've got no process. I love when people ask me to talk about writing a book. I'm like, um, <laughs> <laughs> coffee and <laughs> music. No, I don't have... I know you're meant to create your narrative arc and... But I don't. However, I think I've written, if I was honest, the first two books were a little bit based on my life. But I don't have that template anymore. I'm going to write pure fiction, and so that will be interesting. But I do start at the start, mm -hmm. and then I see where it goes. And sometimes I'm near my word limit, and I don't have the end. And I stress out, and I go for a run or a swim, and I try and pull something out of the air, and mm -hmm. it comes mm -hmm. eventually. What are your favourite three beauty products? <sighs> I talk about them all the time, so it will be no surprise to anyone, but it would be dry shampoo, <laughs> rosy oil, and tinted moisturiser. It's been lovely to talk to you. Thank you very much. My Sarah. pleasure. Thank you. <laughs>